I remember myself, I was young at around 11 till 15, 16 years old, even 17 years old. I was coming to the church every Sunday and I was giving uh, from myself by helping the, the, the bishop and the others in the mass. Uh, my grandma, I lost her body, but I think all of us, all of my family, we think that her spirit is with the, us, you know because we saw how much it is blessed. We opened the shop, we call it as Teta Cafe. Teta means grandma. I was uh, nine to 11 years old. I was, uh, I used to, 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 to buy a flute and to do like the guys what they were doing and to learn how they are making it. In 1967, uh, there were the government of Jordanian here. And uh, our fathers has uh, brought a soldier from uh, a, a, Jord a Jordanian uh, soldier. They started to learn the bagpipe from this soldier. And then we uh, are the first scout in the Middle East who's playing the bagpipe. Especially because it's the Syriac Orthodox scout. Because everybody knows that they are the first scout who has played the bagpipe. I'm teaching drummers. Uh, I was a drummer also because there was a rule here in the scout before you are not 16 17 years old you are not uh, going to be on the bagpipe so you you're gonna be a drummer and before that, for that you have to walk a lot of uh, times I'm happy what I'm doing. I'm giving the children what I has got and maybe I has put my, what it is called, and when you cook something and you put your special uh, taste. So this is what I'm doing. Thanks God, the, the children that I have are listening so good. Scout, for me, it's a way of life. So if you live peacefully, one of the things that you can do in your life to be in a scout, it's building you from inside to be happy, to help the others, to help even the city, to be under uh, the name of God even, makes me full from inside. We are feasting in, in Easter, we are feasting in uh, Christmas time. So we're going scouting by backpiping and uh, doing uh, what we know to do.
start your day with prayers and you start your day with a lot of love and peace and hope with a lot of faith, nothing negative will happen. What a great privilege that the Lord has given me to be inside the walls of the holy city of Jerusalem, where all the passion of Christ took place, where the resurrection took place, because without resurrection, there is no Christianity. So I thank you, Lord, for this great blessing you have given to me to be born and to live within these walls. My mission is to serve as St. Mark Monastery. I discovered God through the eyes of all these pilgrims that they come from all over the world to come and worship you and to feel your Holy Spirit. What a great privilege, this mission that you gave me to serve you as St. Mark Church. And when we speak about the beginning of the church, I think all the people who, who read the Bible and the Gospels, the New Testament, in the book of the Acts, it shows like uh, something called House of St. Mark or House of Mark. Here we are in the same place at that House of Mark. Welcome to St. Mark. This is the house of Miriam, mother of John called Mark. In 1940, we have discovered the inscription here in our language, Syriac, Aramaic, which says, It is written, this is the house of Mary, mother of John, called Mark, proclaimed a church by the holy apostles under the name of Virgin Mary, mother of God, after the ascension of, of our Lord Jesus Christ into heaven, renewed after the destruction of Jerusalem by Titus, the year 73 after Christ. Which means, most probably this was the first church. Because as we know from the, the book of Acts, that all the disciples were here after the, our Lord Jesus Christ did his last supper. Um, so it is the uh, synagogue, the real synagogue. We are in the room of the house of St. Mark, where our Lord celebrated with his 12 disciples the Last Supper. Also, he instituted the Holy Eucharist and he washed their feet. We have a, a beautiful hymn in Syriac. We sing it at that day of the washing of the feet. It says, Tar Gabriel Damar Michoyel. Gabriel, the Archangel, was marveled and uh, and M michael the another archangel started to feel um, afraid and and asking themselves with all other angels how come how come that we see our lord our god that we are scared of looking at him now he is washing the feet of his creatures what kind of God is this that we are worshiping? Several important things happened here, like the Last Supper in the upper room, uh, when Jesus gave us his, his body and his blood. And uh, also after the resurrection, what happened, we know that uh, from John uh, chapter 20 and 21 uh, that Jesus appeared to his disciples when, when they were scared and afraid and they, were, uh, uh, they closed themselves in the upper room. All of them. Jesus appeared to them and said, Peace be with you. Last but uh, uh, very important uh, uh, thing happened here when Jesus, uh, before his ascension to heaven, he told his disciples, remain in Jerusalem. Until when? He said, until you're gonna have a power from above, the Holy Spirit. And they were all together praying in this upper room. These are the real layers of the wall which date the time of Jesus, because Jerusalem was destroyed 
in the year 70 by the Roman commander Titus. So we maintain these layers. These two are from the Byzantine period and the rest is from the 12th century on the time of the Crusader period. Many times St. Mark was destroyed as other places in Jerusalem um, six times was destroyed and rebuilt again. So the upper room is now uh, downstairs. This is the widest part of the rock which exists during the time of Jesus and the disciples. The historical uh, visit of our uh, patriarch more Ignatius uh, Ephraim, the second patriarch of Antioch and uh, all the East and the uh, supreme head of the Syriac Orthodox Church in all the world, was here for a historical visit after 58 years, almost 60 years, that no patriarch from Antioch came for the Syriac Orthodox Church to the Holy Land because of uh, political situation, let's say. We pray for your good health. May Jesus Christ, the Son of God, be with you and with you every step. Your Holiness, once again, welcome to Holy Land to be with us. Thank you. My dear brother, Archbishop Petrek and Vicar Morantimos, that relations are improving. And I'm confident of that because I know how much he loves Christ and his church and his people and for that he is willing to go the extra mile with your help, with your cooperation to fulfill our aspirations to see you all together. And he came here to, uh, to inaugurate and consecrate the altar of the upper room. When I uh, first came here as a guest, I was uh, going around in this uh, beautiful upper room and uh, I met with, uh, with um, one of our beloved uh, bishops from the Roman Catholic Church, Monsignor Pierre, and I told him I have uh, I have a dream. My dream is, as the church started from this place, and the church was one, I want to make this place also available for every Christian being to experience the first church, like uh, the disciples they were uh, at the beginning of the church. He worked with me and he helped a lot to restore uh, this upper room and to make this dream uh, starting to coming alive, to let uh, the, the upper room be available for any Christian as they want to pray, experience and celebrate a Mass or uh, some services in the upper room. Peace.
In San Mark we we find uh, also some something important we have the image of the Virgin Mary we believe that uh, it was drawn by San Luke the evangelist uh, who was a doctor and also was an artist and he designed this beautiful and uh, meaningful image of, of the Virgin Mary holding Christ the child in her hand but something special with that picture is when you look at the Christ uh, he looks like uh, an adult not like a baby not like a child why because San Luke uh, most probably knew the Lord our Lord Jesus Christ when he was uh, 30 years old uh, uh, when he started his mission so um, these important things are in this uh, beautiful and very ancient monastery uh, that belonged to the Syriac Orthodox Church. Our mother Mary, she held Jesus Christ our Lord in her womb for, for nine consecutive months. And our Lord Jesus from her womb, he was, he was controlling the whole universe. So what, what a blessing the woman has. What a blessing, Mother Mary. Our Lord Jesus Christ, He gave dignity for the whole entire woman in the world by choosing our Mother Mary to carry Him for nine months. What a privilege for the woman that we men, we don't have it. Shalom lech tulthu Maryam maliyat taibuthu moran amich barechtu at ibneshi I have offered uh, my mother uh, Virgin Mary, the flowers, I was praying in Aramaic, Hail Mary. Adishto Mariam, Yuldata Loho, Salih Lofain, Hatoye, Hosho, Hosho Mautan, Amin. When we speak about the Syriac Orthodox Church, we speak about a heritage, we speak about a language, a beautiful and the holy language. Our Lord Jesus Christ himself spoke with that language because it was one of the dialect of the Galilee. <laughs> When I was deacon, our bishop, he taught me Aramaic language. I was happy because my family didn't talk Aramaic or my friends. So that's first time when I was 12 years ago when I was in monastery. So that's given me power to continue searching about this language. So now I wrote the Lord's Prayer on the leather. So this, this is the talent God gave me before eight years ago. So from that time until now, still writing this language. So I wrote it, I completed around 4,500 pieces. And I shared it for all the words with the presidents, with the Pope, with different churches in Jerusalem and outside the countries. Education is very important. That's why almost every church has uh, has uh, their own uh, school here in the Holy Land. Why schools are important for the church? I think for several things, but one of them, as the Bible said in Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, it says, my people destroyed because of the lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge it will lead the people to be destroyed. The St. Ephraim School in Bethlehem belongs to the Syriac Orthodox community and welcomes almost exclusively Christian children of all ages belonging to all denominations. St. Ephraim School also ensures that students receive a sound Christian education. This is a primary reason for its ongoing success. The main aim of establishing the school was to preserve the language of our Lord, the Aramaic language. What makes our school very special and different is that we have something, our language, 
Aramaic language, it's holy because Jesus himself spoke with that language. So after writing the Lord's Prayer and sharing for all the words, so now I have a new mission that's to become teacher and teaching the Aramaic language and at our schools, St. Afrem in Bejala. So I started before six months ago teaching the children there the Aramaic language that Jesus was talking in the same language. Thanks God, all the students, they like it and they are enjoying to hear this language, <laughs> to share this language, not just writing, just also teaching and talking and praying. <laughs> The children enjoy because they believe that when they speak this language, they are more close to, to Jesus Christ. This is more of the things that the children testify with. To be at the same place that Jesus was born, I cannot explain the feeling. Here, the plan of salvation started to realize when God became a human when God became not only a human but born like a child. Our school at the moment holds 95% Christians and this is a majority number of Christians in a private school which is not found in any of the other Christian schools in the area. We start the Holy Week with the Palm Sunday. this festivity where you find an a joyful moment for all the Christians in the Holy Sepulchre. Every one of us, every church has their rites and the prayers uh, doing the procession around the Holy Sepulchre. Uh, amazing moment, moment of joy, moment of uh, giving uh, testimony of all the people that they are visiting, all the pilgrims that they are visiting here in these holy places and to see this uh, celebration and to give testimony to all the people that Christ uh, was here more than 2003 years ago. He was uh, walking on this land, doing well, doing good with all the people that they were asking them. So we celebrate that memory uh, with Christ in our heart to bring it with joyful prayers and moments and, and, and hymns to everybody who is visiting uh, the Holy Sepulchre in that Holy Week. In Jerusalem, the Patriarchate of the Syriac Orthodox Church here, uh, we also have rites in the Holy Sepulchres, and we have a church, a very beautiful, old, a small chapel in the Holy Sepulchre. We call it the Chapel of Nicodemus and Joseph. Um, those two very famous personalities in the history of Christianity. We see them in the Gospels, like Joseph, for example, who, uh, who uh, was a rich man and he had his tomb in a garden close to the uh, Golgotha. Uh, where, the, where Christ was uh, crucified. He asked the body of Christ, he washed it with Nicodemus and also the other uh, disciple. They put it in the new tomb of, uh, of Joseph. After he gave his tomb, his new tomb to Jesus, to the body, to bury the body of Jesus Christ, he had another tomb, him and Nicodemus. It's one of the oldest and one of, let me say, it is a testimony to uh, the oldest tomb here in Jerusalem, how it was uh, at the time of Jesus Christ. So it is the tomb of uh, Joseph and Nicodemus. And the church itself, the chapel itself, part of the stones are uh, also the original stones of that garden that Queen Helene, when he, she came, uh, and she found the cross and the tomb. Uh, she digged all the garden and um, around the tomb of Jesus Christ. 
and uh, our chapel uh, it is part of that old mountain and old garden uh, we celebrate every sunday in our chapel in jerusalem and also we do festivities the big festivities we have the right also to pray in the golgotha upstairs and also on um, the stone where they wash the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. All that we do it as all the churches that they have the right to do their services here in, uh, in the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem. The holy fire or the holy uh, light, we call it, the day before the re resurrection. Here it is a big uh, festivity in Jerusalem and uh, uh, we participate also to that uh, festivity. I was uh, nominated uh, as a bishop of, uh, of Jerusalem. The patriarch, with his uh, coming now in this historical visit, uh, he did the ceremony of my enthronement, uh, of my installation. In Greek language and Assyriac language, uh, axios, axios, axios. which means uh, that uh, you deserve, you deserve. Of course, I, am, I don't deserve this, this, this blessing. With Solomon, when, when he was the successor of his father, David, David, he passed away. They nominated him as a king. God told him, ask and I shall give you. He could have asked, anything he want. He humbled himself and he considered himself not capable of this very important position as a king and he told him, I am a small child. I don't know how to enter or go out. What I ask, it's a humble heart and a wisdom. So in front of this important responsibility, as a bishop of Jerusalem, also I ask to be humble, a humble heart, but uh, full of wisdom, not a human wisdom, but a godly wisdom, so I can guide my people to the salvation. Mm -hmm.